I'm Tommy D here with Andrew Smith. This is going to be Nick's rapid fire, Andrew. 85% Jeremy Lin himself said going into the Miami series he wasn't ready to play because he wasn't 100%. How much impact did that have on the locker room in your opinion? It may, might have had an impact on the locker room as far as losing respect of his teammates because they obviously thought they had a chance to win. Looking back, I don't think it matters whether he's 50%, 100%, 85%. If he plays, they're not winning that game. He struggled against Miami a ton at 100%. So what makes you think he's going to help them win that game? Do you think that was a big factor for him basically no longer coming back as a Nick? It, it, it might have played a part. I mean, Carmelo opened his mouth. J.R. Smith opened his, opened his mouth. And it, it definitely played a role. I think it ended up becoming... You don't want to give the Knicks front office too much credit, but I think this was a basketball decision. Speaking of basketball decisions, they've made a ton. Okay, they brought some players in. Definitely Carmelo-type players, guys that can, speak, can surround to Mello, which is what he wanted. Also uh, players that Mike Woodson can deal with. Let's start with Kurt Thomas. Good move. I mean, the ultimate pick-and-pop guy, as you said, Amari Stoudemire, if he wants to lengthen his career, he's got to learn to make that 12-footer, and if, who better to learn from than Kurt Thomas? Raymond Felton. Good move. Better player than Jeremy Lin. See, I like Felton, too. I don't think he's the, his spot catch shooter uh, necessarily, but I think with pace, uh, he can help Amari like he had, a couple, uh, had done last year. Never wanted to leave to begin with, so uh, I, I do like the Felton move as well. How about Marcus Camby? Well, if you want to beat the Heat, you've got to rebound, because if they get rebounds and push, you have no chance, and Camby's one of the best rebounders in the league still at his age. Can you play Camby and Tyson Chandler together? And then how does that, you know, take away from Amari's minutes, Car Carmelo possibly at the four? Well, it doesn't hurt to have the depth. We'll find out if they can play together. I, I think personally that they can, and when you have Anthony on the court, you're going to give him the ball anyway. Great point about Kurt Thomas and the pick and pop and teaching Amari how to extend his career. I, I let, that one, uh, let that one pass, but I, 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 I caught that before it got a little too far. Uh, Pablo Prigioni. We'll find out. You know, he's going to probably only play five, ten minutes a game, and if anyone learns about point guard depth, that's necessary. It's the Knicks after last year. Coming off really competitive basketball here in the summertime, we're going to get Knicks fans are going to get a really good look at, at him uh, during the Olympics. Uh, I believe he's playing for Argentina, uh, and and a guy who gives them good depth, as you mentioned. He could also give Jason Kidd some time off and have him rest his legs. But from Jason Kidd's perspective, and I, I will get that from you now, you know. Is he the type of player that can play 25 to 30 minutes? He's a gamer. He's in good shape, aside from what happened in the Hamptons the other night. Your thoughts on Jason Kidd? Well, he, he's definitely learned how to pace himself, and he knows that hopefully the Knicks are going to be playing 100 games this season, so we'll find out. But he's not so much of a point guard anymore. He's a quarterback, and that's what I think the Knicks needed. Always felt good about that move, especially you know with what he did in Dallas, the, the catch and shooting, being able to get Melo the ball, kind of like Chauncey Billups did. You know, The match that Melo had was with Billups, and he played his best with Billups. I think Kidd now is less of a pick-and-roll player, and He's more of a spot shooter, and I like that move, assuming that he can keep his, his legs strong, which, you know, there's no, really no sign saying that he can't. So I, I like that move as well. Bringing back Novak for 4-15, and 15, what are your thoughts on that? Well, we'll find out. I mean, we, we talk about Kidd. He's, he's a master of the skip pass, and that's what Novak needs. He needs time, and he needs to catch and shoot. He can't put the ball on the floor. It's going to depend on what unit he's with to see if he's going to succeed. Can he play the two? Can he play the three? That's the question that I have with him. He can't dribble. Can he get his release off faster against teams as laterally uh, defensive, excellent defensively as Miami? That's a big question for me with Novak. Now you've got the two summer league guys that they brought in, James Flight White and, and uh, Mr. Copeland, former Col uh, Colorado Buffalo star. Your thoughts on both of those guys? Well, we'll find out again. It's a mystery, but I'll tell you what, if to, lead the lead, to lead Serie A in scoring, you've got to be able to play and make shots. You can't just attack the rim in Italy. You've got to be able to make shots, so that's a good sign. At the very least, I think Flight White will be a good uh, uh, candidate in the dunk contest uh, for, for during the All-Star game. Andrew, great to see you. Great stuff. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Tommy. That was rapid fire. Knicks, see you next time.